and through this body destroy, yet shall I see God, whom I will see for myself. None of us live unto himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live or whether we die, we die or live unto the Lord. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are able and have any trouble. For thus saith the Lord, as one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are his everlasting arms. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I would come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. The Lord is the light of my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? One thing have I desired of the Lord, which I sh shall require, and that is this, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his tabernacle, yea, in the secret of his dwelling place shall he hide me, and shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall my life and my head be lifted up above me, and I shall be comforted by the Lord. Good afternoon, and we do thank you for joining us for the celebration service of Eric Ambrose Easton. Truly, we are thankful for you being here with us this afternoon, and I said it is, it is a celebration service. And as we celebrate his life this afternoon, we're going to start or begin this service with a hymn found in our bulletins, How Great Thou Art. We will remain standing as we're singing this song. Family will remain seated. My God, when I in awe, some wonder, consider all the worlds thy hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, 
thy power throughout the universe display then sings my soul then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art when through the woods and for his glad i wonder and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art when christ shall come in shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim how great how great thou art then sings my soul then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art praise god our heavenly father indeed we are thankful that you are great you are matchless O lord and we thank you today that we are able to come boldly before the throne of grace to find help in time of need we invite thee into this place we ask that thou will fill us with thy joy you would bring comfort to the eastern family you would strengthen them O father we pray and that thou would keep our eyes steadfast toward the day when death pain and suffering shall be no more until that end lord we pray that now you are come bless us through this service strengthen us we pray for we ask all in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit let all say amen and amen you may be seated in the presence of the lord serving us today on the organ is none other than the maestro himself, Marvin Pitcher. 
Operating in our sound system, we have Brother Steve Stevens. We are most thankful for the pastor of this church, Pastor Dijon Tall, along with all of the leaders and officers of this church, and they send their condolences to all the family today. On behalf of Dr. Mendes of the uh, Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, he also sends his condolences to the family. On behalf of the office of the chaplaincy, again, we share our ch condolences as well. The service will continue as outlined in the bulletin where you see your name. We're asking of you to come up here to the podium and to continue with the service as outlined. We begin with our scripture reading. Good afternoon, church. Aunt Elizabeth, Erica, and Stephen, and family, you truly have our condolences, and you're in our prayers. The scripture I'll be reading will be found in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 to 4. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Good afternoon, church family and friends. And I will continue on in the reading of Revelations 21 verse 4, and it reads, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Hope these words bring some sort of comfort to you. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and mourn for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. He is I, his own sparrow, and I know he watches over me. Yes, I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy and I sing because I'm free Oh, his eye His own sparrow And I know He watches me Yes, I 
and I sing because I'm happy. Yes, I sing because I'm free. Oh, his I is all the spell, and I know he watches. Yes, I know he watches. Yes, I know he watches. Watches. Feel free to sing and with me for the last. I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I'm free. Oh, is I is on the spell. And I know he watches me. Say one more. And I sing because I'm happy. Yes, I sing because I am free. I know he watches me. May it bring peace to you guys. Rest in peace, Onks. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Condolences to our family and our friends. And we know, we know that we know that God is still watching over us. Amen. We have a tribute from Alvin and Marion Darrell and family. To Elizabeth, Erica, and the entire Eastern family, we extend our sincere condolences for your loss. May God comfort you during this difficult time. From Derek Keynes, my condolences to the Eastern family on the passing of Eric. He was an icon in Audred Parish, in Audred Paget, as our postman for many years. May he rest in peace. Godpa Eric, what I remember most about you is the smile you wore on your face. I don't think I ever saw you in any other way. Whenever you and my dad got together, a good time was had. Together, you were a force, brothers in arms, having each other's backs. That was always good to see. You made an impact upon my dad that was so great that he asked you to become a godfather to me, his firstborn. Even though I left Bermuda too soon for you and I to bond and connect in our own special way, your connection to my dad and your value to his life leaves me with memories enough to value you also. May you and my dad find yourselves together again in your new lives in heaven. And may God keep you both 
in his loving arms, submitted with love, Dorinda Newsom Bikes. Papa. Our Papa was great. If we needed something, especially for school, Papa made sure we had it. He taught us how to ride our paddle bikes over the jumps we would build together in the backyard. He would play football and basketball with us outside or just simply sit and watch us play, making sure we played nicely together. He would always make us tuna fish salad with lettuce and mayo and introduced us to cream soda and root beer which were a few of his favorite treats. As our papa liked to play cards, we would often play crazy eights after dinner. We spent many times with him eating, talking, and playing. He would call Josiah the hangry monster because he would eat up all the boiled ham. <laughs> Although he fell asleep most of the time, he would sit with us to watch TV as he just liked when we came over to visit. Our papa taught us the nine parishes and the names of the main roads. And he didn't like when we fussed and always told us, just be nice. Do what was right and stay out of trouble. That's a good papa. He would show up at our school events and at our football matches and motocross races. He would cheer us on and tell us to keep safe. In the summer, he would take us to get snowballs almost every week. But we think he just wanted an excuse for a sweet treat. <laughs> Papa, you will be greatly missed, but never forgotten as we cherish all of our memories with you. Love, all, love always, Jazori and Jazai. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm showing my age. I move slow. I'll, I'll try to talk a little quicker. To Elizabeth, Erica, and Stephen, on behalf of my family and the Warwick Workmen's Club family, you have our deepest condolences. Eric Easton, back at the club, we call him EC. So I'm going to refer as EC, but that's, that's who it is, Eric. And I have to take my glasses off to see. <laughs> Eric's association with the club started in the 60s while he worked at the Paget Post Office. As a member, Easy was part of the snooker and billiard teams with the likes of Erlston Lypron, Ruben Birchall, Albert Wilson, and many others. Easy also assisted the club with the fairs the club had in 1964 and 67 to raise funds for the football trip to New York and Canada. And by the way, I was one that made the 67 trip. When the renovations of the Blue Room, which is now Four Star Pizza, I don't know if many of you used to support that room, but it was there and it was the infamous Downstairs Lounge started 
EC was an integral part during the construction phase. EC employed as a bartender with the club started in the 70s as a relief bar steward, and he, had, he began full-time when he retired from the post office in 1989. East was known for his accuracy and serving the members and patrons always recorded the transactions on paper. If there was a discrepancy, EC would refer to the paperwork and all would be verified correct. When the event of advanced technology with the cash register, he still relied on his paperwork. And EC, I'll just tell you a little story when he's employed as the bartender at the club. Um, he had a habit of, like I said earlier, keeping good records. And sometimes it took him a while to do all the writing. So this particular day, a client in the bar was down one end and EC was up the other reconciling some transactions. Well, I guess he took too long or the client was thirsty. So the phone rang and EC said, good afternoon, Warwick Workman's Club. And the reply was, you think I could get some service on this end of the bar? EC would command respect from members and patrons oftentimes saying, the race is for the steady, not the swift. Another attribute about him was that he was really sick. And I can con contest to that because when he was there, the majority of his years, I was sort of like his boss. He would decorate the bar for the Christmas season without being asked. He just went ahead and did it. A trait very rarely seen in these times and EC retired from the club in 2019. A club man, he was a staunch supporter of our sports teams, namely football and cricket. He traveled with the football team to the UK, attending the Arsenal Football Club. On a personal note, I enjoyed East's company on several trips to the West Indies. He was an avid supporter of West Indies cricket. Traveling to the Caribbean practically every year to witness those days of the mighty West Indies team. East and I were probably the first members to travel to the West Indies in the early 80s for cricket from the club. Therefore, numerous, thereafter, numerous members joined the trip. During the matches, he would see the first ball bill, and shortly after, he could be seen walking around the grounds, getting acquainted or reacquainted with the vendors he had met on previous trips. And by the way, we gave him the nickname Bancroft. After the first two days of, 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 the, of, um, of play, EC was well known by the locals who would address him as Mr. Eric. That's how they do it down the West Indies. They don't call your first name Mr. Eric. He was very charitable oftentimes buying food and drinks for the local school children who attended the match. Uh, it was one trip we went on, and I'm not quite sure what I I think it was Barbados. And as EC always saw the first ball, left, and came back at lunchtime and had two lobsters on the half shell and told the boys, hurry, eat. So that's how the type of person that EC was. He wasn't selfish. Uh, you know, he took care of people. And, um, what, and he was quite a fellow. Every November, EC, along with the other members, 
including myself, will travel to New York, New Jersey to attend the New York Marathon and do Christmas shopping for the club, as well as ourselves. The highlight of those trips was our annual dinner at the popular Tio Pepe restaurant in Newark, where no expense was spared. And that's when he used to come out and say, Mama said, never leave home without it. And he always touched his wallet. So I guess he meant money. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> in closing, we appreciate the enormous amount of time he gave to the club. Not just a dedicated employee, but a devoted member. We are surely going to miss EC. So EC, please rest in peace. Thank you. Well, this is funny. I have to put my glasses on to see. Good afternoon and greetings to you all. April 1970. Now, why do I mention this date in particular? Well, this is about the time that my parents, Edward Cheeseman and Cynthia Cheeseman, my two brothers and myself, first arrived in Bermuda. Now just imagine a young family in a strange country for the first time, the first trip, knowing practically no one here. Scary, I guess it would be a daunting situation for any family. But not to worry, along came Eric, Eric Easton. Yeah, I say Eric Easton because Eric was one of those persons that um, people always would refer to by his first and last name. I don't know why. <laughs> it's funny, maybe special, but special Eric was. We lived in Paget, a stone throw away from the Paget Post Office where Eric worked. He frequented the Eve Cycle Shop, otherwise known as the Paget Cycle Shop, right there by the stoplights in Paget, where my father, my uncle, Joe, Lizzie, all worked. Quickly, Eric became a part of our fixture at our home. Fast forward, and you know, he practically spent every day after work, he would come by and visit us. But fast forward, my brothers and I, along with the Virgil boys from next door, would spend practically every summer delivering mail with those Paget postmen. We six boys became a part of the furniture, you can say, at the post office. Eric and his colleagues pretty much adopted us all as their own. We worked hard with those postmen delivering mail. They would hand us the mail and we would take off dashing, I remember, slide the mail underneath the door or drop it in the mailbox. And I know at that time it was in many mailboxes, but we would then dash back to the car. I mean, you know I said car because sometimes those postmen would take a few of us to deliver mail with them. So they'll take the car instead of the bike. I don't even think that we received any pay for our hard work. <laughs> but pay didn't matter. What mattered was the experience, the fulfillment, and the love the postman showed us, especially Eric. We spent all of our free time with them. 
even after their work, the working day, they would gather us up and carry us with them wherever they went. It was an amazing experience. Now, our family came from Barbados. As was mentioned, Eric loved Barbados. He loved to go there for the test matches. And ironically, my last conversation with Eric, I remember, we spoke about that same fact, that he was hoping or planning to go to Barbados another time. Now, I played lots of, I played lots of cricket, but I didn't learn my cricket in Barbados because I was here very much too young for that. I learned my cricket across the street from the Paget Post Office in that driveway in the churchyard. Now, let me just go back a minute. Eric, if you know in recent times, you would see Eric on the motorcycle. But back then, Eric loved his cars. He had one of those Morris Miners, like his brother, his brother still has one today. You know, those white wall tires, white wall tires. And Eric kept that car spick and span. I mean, immaculate, spotless. I swear he cleaned it every day. Of course, the back of the trunk, Eric had a bungee cord. And on that bungee cord would be his chamois, his cheesecloth, if you would call it, all his cleaning rigs and all the cleaner products stacked in a bin in one corner. But that's not all he had, that's not all he had in the car. He also had tennis balls and a makeshift cricket bat. So, one afternoon, my Uncle Joe, we six boys, <laughs> Eric leading a few of the postmen across the street into that graveyard, and there we had our cup match. Now, Eric was a sometimes quiet person, but I swear Eric made the most noise. We made a lot of noise, but I swear Eric made the most noise in that graveyard. And in the absence of any umpires, we could never get Eric out. <laughs> Never. He was some character. I swear, you know, Eric may have woken some of the sleeping in that yard. In the old truth, though, Eric was a humble spirit, calm, charismatic, gentle man. I can also remember across the street at the cycle shop, Eric interacting with the, um, with the tourists. He was a people's person, as was mentioned before. Here he was a real people's person. He would mingle with the tourists, and he was the type of person that could really turn on the charm. He was a charming man. That's something I realized at my young age, that Eric was such a charm. Anyway, at this time I can say, Eric, continue to charm. Stay peaceful, and rest in peace, my family. To Lizzie, Erica, and Stephen, the Cheeseman family extends our deepest heartfelt condolences. And just a little word from Aunt Lorraine. Hope lives on. The grave is not the final door. In Christ we live forevermore. With loss comes pain, but one bright day our tears we will we'll be wiped away. In your loss, may you feel God's comfort and the fulfillment in our hope in Christ. With caring sympathy from the Cheesemans, we wish you our condolences. Thank you. celebration of life so we'll try that again good afternoon church good afternoon. there we go I think mr. Easton would have enjoyed that 
Today, I am standing before you to read the obituary on behalf of my beautiful friend, Erica. She has all of my love, Miss Easton, you do too, and the boys. So join along as I read today the obituary and the beautiful life story of Mr. Eric Ambrose Easton. Eric Ambrose Easton, also known as East, in his 79th year was born December 16, 1944, to the late Albert Sr. and Bernice Easton. Eric was the fourth youngest of his 10 siblings. The family spent their early years residing in work and Eric and his siblings attended Old Road Primary School. Eric then went on to attend the Old Boys School in Prospect, Cunningham's, also known as Church Hill. Eric was no stranger to hard work, having held many part-time jobs in addition to his permanent jobs. He was a golf caddy at Belmont, a bellman at Southampton Princess, and a truck driver at Sky Top Cycles. Eric worked at the Paget Post Office for 20 years as a mailman. His co-workers would always wonder how he finished his mail route so fast and was hardly tired. So one day they asked him. His reply was to get one of those young kids from the neighborhood and put them on his bike as they were full of energy and they think it's fun. Let them run from the bike to the mailbox and back. You bet your boots. The next time his co-workers went out, they took East's advice and this made delivering the mail so much easier, especially when it was hot. Residents from his mail route recalled the, recalled the kids getting excited when they saw Eric coming and they would race to get to him first to be the first one who, would take, who he would take on the back of his bike. Sometimes East would even stop to play ball with the kids in the street. So if your mail was late, this was why. He left the post office to then work as a bartender at one of his favorite hangouts, Warwick Workman's Club, where he worked for over 40 years. The patrons knew when East was working as the bar was always stocked, tidy, and polished. This was his way of assuring that patrons would come back another day. In addition to a well-kept bar, East was also known for being one of the best dressed bartenders on the island as he was always in proper uniform with, cri with a crisp iron shirt and socks always pulled up. Sister Hilda said, Eric was always good at math. This showed in his work because, un because his till was never short. His memory back then was on point as he wrote down all the drinks that he needed to go on that tab. Eric's son, Stephen Eric Easton, also lovingly known as Ivy, recalls the time they would sit and chat about the good old days. On September 12, 1982, Eric married his long-term love, Sadie Elizabeth Harvey, whom he referred to as Suzanne. They had one daughter, Erica, whom he adored and took with him island-wide, sharing his love of cricket and football as they ate hamburgers with the works. Erica also recalls on Saturdays when her mom had to work, her dad would take her for breakfast at either Spot or Buckaroo, letting her order whatever she wanted. This spoiled behavior only increased when the grandkids came along, as no word as the word no sorry was no longer in his vocabulary. From eating sherbet at 9 a.m. in the mornings to bike, building bike jumps or playing football in the afternoon, and always coming back from the store with a treat. There was nothing he wouldn't do to keep them from smiling. Although he didn't get to meet his newest grandchild, Jizzy, he saw pictures of her and he would open his eyes wide and give a smile. We know his love would have been the same and only one can imagine the things she would have gotten away with from being the only girl and the youngest. Despite his illness, Eric may have forgotten other things or people, but he never forgot his daughter or the grandchildren and was always responsive to them. Although he didn't play the game himself, cricket was his favorite sport, and he frequently traveled overseas to the West Indies to attend the Test Match cricket games and other cricketing events. He even went on a golf trip or two. Eric also enjoyed family vacations where they went on numerous cruises and traveled around the U.S., he also shared his love for eating lobster with family and friends, making it a point to go to Oysters Restaurant in Barbados when visiting the island for cricket. His favorite restaurant in Bermuda for lobster was the former Black Horse and Lobster Pot. 
Easter, Jamal, and youngest grandson, Jezai, how to make sure they got all of the meat out of the lobster by breaking the legs and horn, something that they do each time when eating them. Eric was known island-wide as he frequently visited all the sports clubs and workmen's clubs to socialize with friends and play card games, pool, and snooker. Outside of work workmen's club, he particularly liked to hang out at the Lappers Club, Axe Artillery Club, the Morning Crew, Spinning Wheel, and Places Place. When he wasn't working, he could be seen riding around on his orange CB bike, which he kept in immaculate condition. A story was told that Eric and a group of the boys were riding their bikes one weekend, and it started to rain. They looked back and no longer saw East, so they turned around and found him pulled over in the bus stop, talking about he is not getting his bike wet. <laughs> he was the same way with each of his cars, always cleaning them and keeping them covered on the, or in the garage and not liking to drive them on rainy days or drive in any place that was muddy so he wouldn't mess up his clean tires. You would have thought he had a luxury BMW. He leaves to cherish in his memory his loving wife, Elizabeth Easton, daughter, Erica Easton, and Jamal, son, Stephen Easton, grandchildren, Jazuri, Jazai, and Jose Easton Thompson, siblings, Louis Soltis and Howard, Hilda Tucker and Walter, Loretta Smith and Clarence, Albert Jr. Easton and Sharon, Kenneth Easton, James Smith, and Carlton Smith, in-laws Maurice Harvey and Edna, Larry Harvey, Joan Harvey, Denise True, special niece Gladys Casey, godchildren Willoughby, Jamie Richardson, Silk Kurt Richardson, Dorinda Newsom, Bikes, and numerous other dear family and friends. Eric was predeceased by his mother-in-law, Edith Harvey, Siblings, Raymond Easton and Gloria, Edward Easton and Levita, Carol Bean, Patrice Easton, grandson, Roman Edwards Easton, and brother-in-laws, Collingwood Harvey and Robert True. At this time, the family would also like to share their acknowledgements. Our family would like to express our heartfelt thanks for your presence here today your support and expressions of love through the many phone calls, prayers, visits, and other acts of kindness during our time of bereavement has not gone unnoticed. Special thank you to the doctors, nurses, and staff at King Edward Memorial Hospital and Friends of Hospice, D.H. Augustus and Sons Funeral Home, Southampton Seven-Day Adventist Church, and the church family, Chaplain Kevin Santucci, Steve Stevenson, Marvin Pitcher, Duane Williams, and of course, Work Workman's Club. And so after the burial, the family also requests your presence to break bread together at of course, the Work Workman's Club. Thank you. Walk tall. There's somebody who doesn't understand language around here. I came up in a parish of which when we heard the name Walk Tall United, something's happening, isn't it not? Again, to our, our Work United staff, members, and friends, it is a pleasure to have you here with us this afternoon, joining in this illustrious service, although it is a service of mourning, it is also a service of celebration. It was during the early of, uh, I should say the latter years of the 70s, I played for Work United for one season, until Shaggy Dog took out my legs. <laughs> Good afternoon to the Easton family as well. Elizabeth, Stephen, Erica, Again, to all the uncles, aunties, cousins, 
Our deepest condolences to all of you again. In just looking at the life of Eric, I said, Lord, what is it that thou would have me to share with the family of a word of encouragement? And in just looking at just the last 24 hours, I would say, of hearing of news of one of the members in hospital, again, our heart says, Father, please bring added strength here today. And so the Lord has impressed me to share with you and us the subject entitled Reaching Up. Please pray with me. Father, indeed, we are thankful for your word. Bless us through thy word. Thy word is truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We live in a world where we are tried on every side. From the moment we are born, we come into a world of trials and tribulations. We don't ask or didn't ask for it. We didn't sign up for it, neither were we conscripted to it. But automatically, as mommy and daddy got happy, something happened. And we are the product of happiness. What do you say? Some are here saying otherwise. But we are the product of happiness. When one looks back on the life of Eric Easton, one quickly sees that he has themes through his life. For instance, he was born during the war years. Two, the family years with his mother and father and siblings were exciting times, one with another. His educational years were also a platform for making him such studious person of which he was, and at the same time, one of which we can rely upon. His working years as a government worker showed us that we ought to be very disciplined when we work within the government areas of our nation. His marital years, his wife, his family, showed us that we ought to embrace the family with love, with kindness, with sincerity. We ought to, through good times and bad times, be there for our families. We ought to provide for our families. Number six, his working years with the Warwick Workmen Club, better known as the Great Walk Tall United, showed us that he was a committed man for well over 40 plus years to the community. Number seven, his contemplation years, and that is now, leading up toward his years of retirement and beyond his retirement, for he believed in God, and he and his wife would regularly attend church. Number eight, the time of sickness, trials and tribulation taught us that through every trial of which Eric had gone through, he never complained. On these eight points, we can spend the next few hours as we unpack these points, but we will not today. But did you know that people, places, and things of great value and significance are portrayed in themes? Artists paint and draw paintings in themes. Music is played in themes. Every writer follows a theme. Comics, music, even movies and plays are all 
outlined in themes. Good government, businesses, organizations, sports clubs, and even churches operate on the yearly platform of themes. The Bible is written in themes. The plan of salvation is unfolded in themes. It was Dr. Edmund M. Abraham who described love as he says, love is the theme of all religious life, but making it commercial is satanic. Family and friends, we have come here today to celebrate a man whose life fully displayed within its points, themes. And I got to thinking about that last evening and this morning. Why is it that this man's life is outlined in themes? Is God trying to teach us something through his life? Through all what Eric had seen and experienced in life, he never complained but was always reaching up. I remember him going throughout Warwick, and he was always a tidy man, always a pleasant man, always a man of which encourage you. I like that about him. It didn't matter what color you are or who you wear, you were always someone in Eric's sight. Yet in order for us to make it in life, friends, we must also be like Eric, and that is reach up. Become a word of encouragement to someone. In this world, some have displayed very treacherous disciplines and even characters during trial, tribulations. Others have asked, why am I going through trials? And still others have lifted up their heads and praised God and pressed forward in the midst of their trials. I saw Eric in the last days of his life like this. It is said that the, early, that the only bird that dares to pick on the head of an eagle is a crow. It sits on the back of a crow and it continuously bites or picks at his neck. However, the crow doesn't respond, nor does it fight. It doesn't waste any time or effort. It just continuously soars higher and higher and higher. And as it goes higher, friends, the crow on back of the eagle's back loses oxygen and falls to death. Today, it is time to stop wasting our time with the crows of this life with the things that you or I can't control, the pain, the sickness, the loss of jobs, loss of homes, the loss of cars, bikes, and the list goes on, and it's time to be like eagles. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall munch with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. It is time for us to soar to the highest. Today it is time for us to stop wasting time with the crows such as people who don't care for you but only use you. It is time for us to rise higher. Today it is time to stop wasting time with the crows of dangerous people who only approach your, your life to only try to bring you down and not lift you up. But one day, friends, you shall see them Disappear. It is time to reach up. The word of God reminds us, and he shall put a new song in my mouth. God speaking here, friends, even praise unto God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. I have thought with what joy the angels of heaven would look down from Mount Zion. They praise God. And indeed, there is joy to the full 
with every human on earth who constantly praises God as well in good times, in bad times, in loss of life, and in new life coming. We ought to praise God. What do you say out there? In just a little time, the King of kings and Lord of lords will come in power and great glory. In just a little time, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. In just a little time, that which is shall be no more. And we shall enter in through the gates into the holy city, New Jerusalem. In just a little time. How long, Lord? Not long. We shall enter through the gates. When Curtis Mayfield wrote the song, People Get Ready which was first sung by the Impressions in the years after the Great March of 1964. For many it captured the spirit of the march. The song reached across racial barriers, religious barriers, lines to offer a message of redemption and forgiveness. But have you ever wondered what is the meaning of the song, People Get Ready? People Get Ready is a song about boarding a train for the Christian hereafter. Without ever actually mentioning the name God or Jesus. And feels like a song that wasn't in intentionally crafted, but was composed during a period of inspiration. People get ready. There's a train coming. You don't need no baggage. Just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesel humming. You don't need no ticket. Just thank the Lord. I used to sing that song many years ago, and I was thinking about other stuff. People get ready. It was a militant mind which I had back then, and many of you may have had the same thing not knowing the full context of the song. And now we can sing the song now with grace and understanding. What do you say out there? Let us get ready at once. We ought to separate from evil and begin to sing the songs of praise and rejoicing because the train is coming. Let our lips be turned to praising God instead of begrudging one another. Let us lift up one another, even as Eric did. Find ways of encouraging one another. I said to myself, there are two people within the world who are the most creative people, yet at the same time have the greatest profession in all the world. And that is a bartender, and the other is a barber. They are everything to everyone. People come into that barber chair or maybe at the bar and share all sorts of stuff in life. And the bartender's just there and he's just conversing and talking, easing the pain, helping that man or that woman who may be for that night the last time thinking about life and eases his pain. He goes back home to his family. I've seen with my own eyes for 18 years sitting in a barber shop with someone who was at the age of 84 years old. He would come and he would share thoughts of inspiration. And I've seen people come to that barber shop deep down depressed, leaving that barber shop uplifted and willing to live again. I said we ought to thank God for men and women of various professions. What do you say? They're all special in God's sight. Yes, we may not agree, but at the same time, we ought to thank God for them, for many of them have saved lives. We ought to start to begin to educate ourselves, educate ourselves to more praise than complaining. I've never seen Eric complain. I've never. Now, he may have complained, but I've never seen him complain. This spoke great volumes to me. And when things go crossway at your home, 
strike up a song. When it seems like the dog is barking too hot, strike up a song. When it seems like people just are getting on your last, last nerve, sing a song. It is the songs of which we sing that carry us over the battlefield. The children of Israel had now just come into Babylon. And the Bible says, And the king Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Sing us a song. And they said, How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Not that they didn't wish to sing, but they were out of concert with this new setting here. But as time went on, God now would raise up Daniel. Daniel who would now become a great leader within the kingdom of Babylon and then in the kingdom of Media-Persia. And he would sing songs, friends. Matter of fact, he would even pray openly even to the, to the dismay of his fellow comrades. When you drive out the enemy, friends, it is finished. And you drive him out quickly when you sing a song. The word of God becomes exceeding precious when we start to put it in his right perspective. The second point I'd like to raise this afternoon, and that is this. When we ask God to help us, we ought to ask Him to help us to reach in. Help is on the way, friends. Number one, ask God to help you to reach out. Eric showed us by his life that he reached out. Secondly, we ought to ask God to help us to reach in. And when we need to grow, we need help from without, and we need only God to help us. It is during the quiet times of your life, the mornings and the evenings, which you take a time to ask God to help you within. This is called reaching in, seeking God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy strength. We are thankful for special times of the year that people take out to pray. We are thankful for special times during the day that people take out to pray. We are thankful for certain times during the week that people take out to pray. But most importantly, friends, we ought to always ask God to help us to reach within. Help us. Number three and lastly, we must ask God to help us. Help us as we interact with our fellow men. This is very important, friends, because people are very, very different these days. It's not like the Bermuda of years ago. Bermuda has shifted tremendously. And even since COVID-19, we have seen a shift within the mindset of the people of this country. I have never seen so many people on the road walking. Matter of fact, it seems like they're talking to themselves. Are you really paying attention to what's happening around you? I've never seen so many people challenge bikes and, sorry, challenge, challenge trucks and challenge cars with their out of control riding. Something has happened. I've never seen the hospital so full with people trying to get help. Something is happening. The Bible reminds us that one of the prophecies of the last days is that the fear of men shall wax great in the earth. And because iniquity shall, shall abound, the love of many shall wax worse. I've never seen people act the way how they're acting toward their fellow men say something they just want to do harm to you not talk with you but do harm to you i've never seen this stuff before lastly i said john looking down at this here cycle of change 
He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. It seemed like John understood the grave experiences of which all God's children will go through in the last days. In understanding these things, friends, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Friends, a better day is coming. When the righteous, they shall walk on streets of gold. A better day is coming. When our loved ones, they shall be called together with those that are living. And they shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the year. A better day is coming. When there shall be no more death, pain, or suffering. A better day is coming. When husbands and wives will be brought back together. Children will be brought back together with fathers. A better day is coming. When grandchildren shall see papa and grandmothers and all others again who have parted away. A better day is coming. And as that better day comes, friends, it is my prayer that God would help us to be prepared for that better day. Be prepared for that better day by reaching up. I look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. As you listen to this song in closing, friends, it is my prayer that you, with me, will continue to look up. Of the mighty rescue, and is closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet. As he sounds the call mm. At the midnight cry We'll be going Around me, I see prophecies fulfilled every day, and the signs of the time they are appearing everywhere. Oh, I know. Father, as he says, son, go for my children Ooh, at the midnight cry, the bride of Christ will rise when Jesus steps down. God's children, the day in Christ will rise to meet Him in the air. 
the time They are appearing everywhere Then the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then those that remain to be caught up together to meet him in the air, oh, at the midnight cry, we'll be going home, going home. At the midnight cry, mm -hmm. at the midnight cry, it is at the midnight cry, we'll be going home, going God. It is at the midnight cry, friends. Soon our maker and deliverer will come. The question is, shall we be ready? Will you be ready? Will you be ready to meet him in peace? I want to meet him in peace, friends. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. The one who saved me by his grace. I want to be ready. More than just a song, friends, it is a song of experience. Let this be your song of praise. Let this be your anthem. As we bring this service to a close this afternoon, we would use the song, When We All Get to Heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout. The victory shall we all stand beside the family.
sing the wonders love of Jesus sing his mercy and his grace in the mansion bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place oh, when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory while we walk this pilgrim pathway clouds will overshadow the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, when we all see Jesus, and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. But one him in glory. We pray when we all see Jesus will sing and shout the victory. Who, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be! Who, when we all see Jesus, we will see.